Hello and welcome to Life Questions. I'm Bill Harris, your host. If life these days has you folding your arms or scratching your head, you're not alone. We're all looking for answers to life's many questions. And so we have assembled a panel of local ministers to share their biblical insights with us by answering the many questions that you, our viewers, have sent us. And so let's meet them at this time. First, we have Pastor Chris Langstaff of Bell Center Church of Christ, followed by Pastor Kelly Waltz of Spencerville Trinity United Methodist. Then there's Pastor Darwin Dunton of Mount Tabor Church of God in Salina. And rounding off our panel, Pastor Jeremy Thompson of Paulding Nazarene Church. Lady and gentlemen, we're happy to have you all with us today. Now we've got a, we're armed, we've armed ourselves with a number of questions from our viewers. And I'd like to start with this one. Considering 70%, now this is his statistic, Considering 70% of Christians and almost 50% of pastors believe in evolution, evolution um, why doesn't the church do a better job of teaching creation? Theistic evolution, in my opinion, is blasphemy, he says. What do you say? So, I'm sure you all are chomping at the bit to get to that one. And so we'll start Pastor Dunton. I knew you were going to call him. <laughs> My name is Darwin, okay? <laughs> First name is Darwin. Yeah, you know, when I go to churches and I start churches, I usually preach a sermon on, on evolution within the first month because I said you might as well get it out of the way, you know, okay. and uh, just have a lot of fun with it. So, um, first of all, I looked up these statistics and I couldn't find them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where this individual got these statistics. So that's the first thing. I uh, mean, I, you know, I looked at a number of websites, couldn't find it. The second thing, and I really, I don't know if I'm really going to go into evolution. Uh, um, um, I have no problem with um, microevolution, uh, evolution within the species. I see it all the time. I mean, if you're a farmer, you, I mean, that's what we're doing. We're manipulating the animals and the species. So I, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, Macroevolution that we came from sludge of 20 trillion years ago, I, I, I struggle with that because I believe that God made us unique and made us special in humanity. So that, that, that's not the issue to me. What bothers me, and I really want to focus on that word blasphemy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we talk about cancel culture today, um, and that if you don't believe exactly what we believe, we're going to cancel you. And I've seen it in the church on this very issue, mm -hmm. uh, where um, if you don't hold to the literal six days of creation, then you don't believe God's word, and therefore I'm going to cancel you. And I've seen pastors who've lost their churches or even people who've left their churches because of that. So uh, that's really the word I, I kind of want to focus on because um, I know God created. When I think I get, when I get to heaven and we find out just how he created, I think we're going to be really surprised mm -hmm. because we know that God existed 20 trillion years ago because he's always been here and always will be. Yes. I mean, and so if you really want to blow your mind, think about what God did before the, the, the earth was created. Or what was God doing even before the angels were created? Mm -hmm. What was happening a gazillion and kabillion years ago? And, and your brain is going to hurt if you, <laughs> if, if you do that. So we do know that you know, the God was involved in a lot of other things and other creations, uh, even before... Uh, the earth was even uh, put, in, put into practice. So um, how a person believes about creation, uh, I don't think is a bearing on their salvation. Because uh, can you please tell me where in the scripture it says, thou shalt believe in six literal days in order to be, give, in order to be a Christian? It's not there. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Mm -hmm. But I think we, we have these things that we hold on to so strongly. Mm -hmm. And we make that the litmus test if we're Christian or not. Mm -hmm. Now, do I believe in theistic evolution? No, I don't. Okay. I know pastors who do. And they love Jesus. Just a word to describe or define better what that is. Uh, theistic revolution is when uh, God set it in motion. Now he sits back and watches how it turns out. Okay. Uh, and I, I know of pastors who do that. And, and do I question their spirituality? I don't agree with them, but um, I don't question their spirituality. 
My mother-in-law believed in two creations. Two creations? Two creations. It was uh, Genesis chapter 1 to uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, and then on. Because if you notice, there's kind of a split right there. And so she's saying, she, she thinks that the dinosaurs and there was a pre-Adamic race and everything that lived in Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 2. And then something, she says, that's when Satan fell to earth and then destroyed everything. And then a new creation was made. And there you have the exact Adam and Eve yeah. that were there. I've heard it where it's, there's a big gap, a tremendous gap between Genesis 1-1 one, one and Genesis 1-2. Mm -hmm. Just between those two verses in the first chapter of Genesis. Yeah. And, and, and we don't know, even if God created Adam and Eve right at Genesis chapter whatever it was, one whatever, how long was Adam and Eve around before they fell? We don't know. Yeah, we don't know that either. Yeah. I mean, they could have been in the Garden of Eden for a, a, a billion years, for all we know. It's just that the Bible makes it look like it was like an immediate thing. Uh, they were created, God made Eve, they looked at each other, he looked nice. Oh, by the way, there's a tree over there. Hmm. That's the way we, that's the way the Bible right, makes right. it look. So I, I'll be quiet. I, I just that word blasphemy bothers me, and, okay. and because I think sometimes uh, we are the cancel culture, <laughs> and, and we get we get hung up on things that really don't mean that. It's it's right. not important. And cancel culture really means just writing somebody off because they if because they, dis they disagree with them. If you don't believe what I believe, you're out of here. Okay. Step forward, right here. Oh, I, we can debate a lot of things. And um, there are some things that are not negotiable. You know, how creation all played out. I think there are lots of things that we're never going to understand because we are just human. And that's for God to understand and it's for us to put our faith and trust in Him and be dependent on Him. But the things that we can't negotiate on and don't debate on and we need to stand strong for is the Bible's all about Jesus and Jesus is our Savior and Lord. Mm -hmm. And you can't minimize or change or, and so I can go ahead and debate about creation and lose focus of what my mission is. Mm -hmm. And I'm so caught up debating with people and trying to convince them that I'm right when that's not what my mission is. Mm -hmm. My mission is to share about Jesus so that others know that he's the only way to have salvation, to experience eternity, mm -hmm. everlasting mm -hmm. life. So we can debate all we want to, but those are small things, or I can focus on what is the most important thing for me. And I want to spend my time focusing on the non-negotiable, mm -hmm. Jesus is my Savior and Lord, mm -hmm. And I'm going to want to do everything that's going to drive home that message. And if we disagree on how creation, how many days, exactly how it played out, then we agree to disagree. Well, I think to both of your points, the, the word that stuck out to me was opinion. Um, and, and I don't. I don't want to feel like we're dogpiling on the person that asked this question because that's not my intention. I know it's not anybody's intention here. This is a very legitimate well, question. Well, and we all tend to sometimes go off about these little things in the exactly. big scheme of things exactly. don't matter. Exactly. And I think that is something that the enemy can use mm -hmm. to, to bring about division. Mm -hmm. Everybody is entitled to opinions. I mean, we, we're human. We all have opinions right. on a wide variety of things. But honestly, at the end of the day, is this where you want to draw a line in the sand? Because we're not talking about a salvation issue. We're talking about, in, in my opinion, these things are room for interpretation. Uh, like we talked about in the, the meeting before we, before we came out, mm -hmm. God's Word tells us exactly what it is God wanted us to know. Mm -hmm. And again, to your point, there are a lot of things that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand the whole thing about the crucifixion. I mean, I understand it. I can't wrap my head around right. it. I don't know why or how Jesus loved us enough to willingly lay down his life for our sins. But just because I don't understand it doesn't mean I don't believe it. Right. I, I don't right. understand how an internal combustion engine works. <laughs> <laughs> but when I sit down behind the driver's seat and push the button, I know it starts yeah. and it takes me where I, yeah, I get where I want to go. So be, be careful with the word opinion 
and blasphemy because yes. those are pretty pretty stark words, pretty pretty stark language. And we're, if we're going to push our opinion and keep pushing our opinion, we've got people that are watching us and they're going to think, well, they just want us to believe what they believe. Right. And then are they going to be willing to listen to anything else we have to say? Yeah. Right. Pastor Thompson, you seem like you're chomping at the bit to get in here. <laughs> Is this my chomping at the bit face? I need to change that. Um, I, I think that it really does come down to, to like interpretation. And I think that what's interesting is people that, um, that most often want to, to push this literalist view, they say they're biblical literalist but, literalist, but there's a lot of other passages that they don't take as literally as they might, might think. And um, as best I can tell, most gentlemen in churches are walking around with both eyes. And, um, <laughs> and I think that we don't necessarily believe that women are saved through childbirth, which says in, in the book of Timothy. Um, so there's a lot of things that we all make interpretations on. But I think that there's something, once again, that's been said. And it's one thing that I love about my tribe that I'm a part of, that our biblical doctrine talks about we believe the Bible is inerrant in all things, in all matters pertaining to salvation. Mm -hmm. It's clear. clear. That's where we believe the Bible is inerrant. There's no questioning about that. Other things we can say, okay, that's awesome, but let's be clear on this because this is what we think the story of the Bible is really all about. Okay. All right. I guess we've exhausted that topic then. We settled it, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're right. They won't have any further questions about it. The emails are going to fly. Yeah. Well, on to another question then. Look at this. Why does God want to be worshipped? That sounds narcissistic, is what this person says. And, I, and, and I, I've got to add a disclaimer here. This is a question we have in the section of non-Christians who write us and are asking questions. This is a non-Christian. Why does God want to be worshipped? Because it sounds narcissistic. Have you thought about this at all? Why does God want to be worshipped? You're all looking up in the sky. Mm. I, I, <laughs> I'll jump in. Um, I think it has more to do with relationship. I think when we hear the word worshiped, we think of like a king sitting on a throne and Jesus is the king. I'm not saying don't hear what I'm not saying. But I think God's more interested in having personal relationship with us. And that's always a, a love that is exchanged. And the only way that he can be magnified is me giving him honor and respect and allowing him to so fill me and shape me that it changes how I live. And that worship is not, um, what, what does a Roman say, 12, right? Like present your bodies as a living, living sacrifice. sacrifice. This is your worship. And I think when we hear worship, we think of singing mm -hmm. and that, mm -hmm. but I think the way I truly worship is how do I live and give my life as a living sacrifice? And I think that's the worship that God is after, mm -hmm. right? Not, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did, like, if I was hungry, I wouldn't ask you. I, the blood of, you know, the thousand rams, 10,000 is your firstborn. That's not what God requires. That's not the worship he's after, mm -hmm. but to do justice and love mercy and walk humbly. And so I think the worship that God is after is not this understanding that we might think of a narcissist who wants to just have all of the attention, all of the praise, the worship that he's looking for is living his kingdom and being a part of the kingdom that he's called us to be a part of. All right, well, let's pause for just a minute because we've got to take a break. When we come back, I'd like to pick up where we left off on this because it's a very interesting conversation. We'll be right back right after this. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, we're back, and we've got a question on the table here, and it basically asks, why does God want to be worshipped? Because of that very fact, it seems like he's narcissistic. He's trying to get all the attention. And very good answer you came up with there, Pastor Thompson. What about the rest of you? How say you? 
Pastor Dunn? <laughs> I think it really just boils down to uh, just a very simple statement. God is God and we are not, and he wants us to know that. He does not want us to be the God of our own life. Mm. Very simple. But to me, I think that's the real reason. It's a recognition of who God is. It's a recognition that he is the creator, he is the sustainer, he is the everything, and we're not. And um, yeah. I, On the way over this morning, I was listening to uh, another sermon, and uh, the, the minister was talking about sin. And he said, what's the middle letter of the word sin? <laughs> it's I. Mm -hmm. Whenever we take our eyes off of Christ, and look on the things that are around us, we, we tend to go astray. And I think, you know, worship is, is such a broad term. Mm -hmm. When somebody really fully understands, and I don't think we'll fully understand this, this mm -hmm. side of heaven, but right. when a person begins to understand how much God loves them, how much he, how much he wants to bless us, how, what, what he's done for us through the person of Jesus on the cross, we can't help it. We can't help right. but to be thankful. That's a key element of worship mm -hmm. is, is being thankful, yes. you know, expressing our thanks to God. We can't help but give him the glory and the honor that, that he is due. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that the fact that God desires that, to, to your point, God wants that relationship with us so badly that because he understands what will happen in our lives when we begin to acknowledge his role in our life. So it's worship is just a natural, a, a combustible feeling, if you will, once we, we understand, begin to understand God and what he's done for us. Worship is the natural result. It's more of a response than a command. Yeah. Yeah. And as we know, that God always nudges us first, and we always respond in some way. And why it's, it's hard for an unbeliever to truly understand why we want to sing of God's praises, whether it's through our words, through our actions, because they can't experience what we're experiencing mm -hmm. on the inside and how God is truly changing our lives. And so to them, it may be narcissistic because... They can't truly comprehend, but if we share with them the different ways that our life has changed or even continue to love them even though they may hold this view, then God's going to be able to work with that and they'll get a small little glimpse of what it is that we're experiencing. Wow. And, wow. Um, Would you say since God is the creator of human beings, he knows how we're all wired. Mm -hmm. And he knows that if we take our eyes off of him, take our attention off of him, that we're going to get in trouble. Sin. We're going to get in sinful trouble. And sin, of course, has consequences. It's, right. it's, it's detrimental to us. Yeah. And he wants to praise and worship, not only because he's God and we're not, which is great, but is it possible that he wants us to keep our eyes on him mm -hmm. so that we can stay focused? Yeah. Is, is, is that a part yeah. of it, you think? Yeah, because if we lose focus, then um, things of this world start to take and impact us, and then it's going to derail us from what God has planned how to use us on down the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that when I don't spend time with God through yeah. prayer, yes. Bible study, there's a huge difference in how things go for me as opposed to when I do. Mm -hmm. And God can use me in greater ways when I and focus solely on him. Last Sunday, I was about, I was doing the message at the 11 o'clock service before I started, the devil was under attack, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't even think I can get up there. Mm -hmm. But I knew I had to go no matter what and stay focused on God. God has got this. He's yeah. gonna, the, yeah. the spirit is going to speak through me. And it was amazing. You know, I, I'm doing some ongoing research on the very fact that God says in so many places in the Bible, Old and New Testament, that he wants us to be in his presence continually. Mm. And you'll see either the word continually or consistently. And, and I know that it doesn't mean, Pastor, that we've got to be somewhere on our knees all right. the time to be in his presence. It's right. just that 
We've got to acknowledge him throughout the day, all day long. We need to do that. Well, we're and told to pray without ceasing. Yes. Uh, okay, right. that's a little dangerous when you're on your way to a TV station <laughs> to uh, to record a, a broadcast. Mm -hmm. But but to live a life of prayer and yeah. thanksgiving, I think will will help us get to that point where we are in His presence. Yeah. And you know, it, it, it's it's interesting um, when you talk with somebody. Well, I just feel that God is. Uh, is so far away from me. Well, it's not him that moved. All right. Yeah. And, and it's not feelings either. It's, yeah, it's faith, right. not feelings. Yeah, I was going to bring right. that up. Hey, you know, I, I ate breakfast this morning and it's not agreeing with me. That I must not be close to God. I, yeah, I, need, I think we need to be careful on feelings. I know what you're saying, sure. so don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I think uh, uh, another thing, and I'm going to maybe change this a little bit because it kind of came to me is there's so much noise in our world right now. And we'll spend more time on Facebook looking at blogs that people write than God's Word. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and we'll look at this person that has an opinion about something. I'm not going to mm. bring it up, but about something. And, uh, and then I'll, sometimes I'll get in there and I'll find out, uh, I'll do a little research on them. Because mm -hmm. I, I do that all the time. I go, who is this? What authority does he have? And I find out it's a 24-year-old that just graduated from high school about <laughs> five years ago and uh, that has an opinion. And I'm going, what authority do you have to say this stuff? Mm -hmm. And that people are looking at that noise and getting all revved up and everything else instead of going to something that's, you know, 13, you know written over 1,300 years yeah. or 1,500 years. And, uh, and, and this is what God wants us to know. Right. Well, and we continually have that choice. Am I going to go to Facebook and see what's going on? Or is my time better spent going to God's Word, mm -hmm. getting fed that way? So when I do see things or when people say things, I can be more prepared. Hey, what about mm -hmm. and redirect people into mm -hmm. God's Word? And, and I think for some reason, we look at Facebook and we think that everybody on there is an expert. Yeah. And that, that's what causes the problem. And that's, I think that brings a disconnect. Lots of people do. I don't. And I breeze right through some of the things <laughs> on because I know they're not experts. They're just sharing their opinion. Sure. Let me take two more questions from our viewers and put them together because they're so related and seem to imply that they are disappointed with God because he perhaps hasn't come through. Uh, this first letter, our grandson is paralyzed and is having problems. It can be difficult to not get upset with a situation like this. I don't want to become angry that this is how he has to live his life. Uh, there's not much in the way of other facts we know about this case. The next letter, my friend passed away from cancer and her children are aged 10 to 18. I just don't understand why God would allow something like this. Please help me understand. Uh, you see where I'm coming from? It, it's that it, it, God perhaps has not come through, that there were, there were expectations that were not met here on God's part. What do you think? I need to go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I'm sorry, go no, ahead. No, ahead. please go ahead. The idea that you say expectations, and we often go to God with our prayers, our concerns, and we have expectations of what we want God to do for us. And we need to take time to take a look at God has a plan. It's about his desires, his plans for each person's life. And we need to go in with an openness to how God is going to answer our prayers. Is he going to say yes? Is he going to say no? Is he going to say, wait, or I've got a better plan and be open to what, how God's going to work in the midst of everything that's going on? Because uh, we get so narrow focus. Oh, God didn't answer my prayer. He's not answering my prayer because he didn't answer it the way I wanted him to answer the prayer. Then we truly miss how God may actually be at work in bringing about yeah. a different yeah. answer that's going to be so much better than what we could ever comprehend. Well, you know, Pastor Thompson makes a very good analogy. I think he says some people have a mentality whereby they use God as a vending machine. Mm -hmm. You know, you put something in of value, just like you do in a vending machine, and you get something out, hopefully, of value. Well, you think you can push the button and you get what you push for. You know, we all get frustrated when we hit, you know, 8th, 12th, and we get the thing that we didn't want. But um, I, I think... Like, I hear in these questions, um, grieving? Grieving, grieving, yeah. 
And I think that um, for this grand grandchild, I'm sure that when this grandson was in the womb, there was a lot of hopes, a lot of um, we're, we're going to do this, mm-hmm. and they're just it's not there. And I think sometimes the only way to get to healing is you got to go through the grieving process. And it's easy sometimes when you're on the outside. And I think all what all you said is true, but sometimes that's we jump to there's a plan. And, and if I'm the one in the situation, I may just want to throw my shoe at you because it's not helpful to me where I am right now. In part, I think of, um, so whoever this is, like, I'm, so, I'm so sorry that this happened. I am. I want to grieve with you. And my hope is, is that you'll have people who will come around you and go through this with you. And as you journey through the grief and the sorrow and the unmet expectations, I think hope comes on the other side. And I think this takes, honestly, in my mind, back to Genesis 1, (laughs) oddly enough. In the beginning, there was darkness and chaotic waters. And unfortunately, God doesn't get rid of those things. But he does tell them, I'm going to speak in the midst of them. And so each day he's separating these things, but he doesn't get rid of the darkness. He doesn't get rid of the waters, but he speaks in the midst of the chaos and the darkness of life. And what's so encouraging to me is that at the end of each day, we think it's morning and evening. But if you notice, it says it's evening and morning. Yes. It's the reverse. Yes. So wherever you are, mm-hmm. morning's coming. Mm-hmm. Life will not end in darkness. Life will end in light mm-hmm. if to those who believe in him. That's and so wherever you are, we have to journey through the waters and through the darkness, knowing that God speaks in the midst of but that he is with us in our grieving and our tears. And I don't know why moms die with young kids of cancer. And I don't, I I think it's horrendous. But I know that they were never, once again, never promised anything Mm -hmm. other than when the waters, the waters will not overwhelm you. And I'm with you in the midst of it all. Got about a minute left. The letter implies that God allowed this to right, happen. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I highlighted. Why, why would God allow something like this? And mm-hmm. I think that theme might be in both of those questions. Why did God allow my grandchild to be paralyzed at birth? Why, why did God allow this person to be taken? You know, when we, when we look back at Genesis 3, when the fall happened and when God was pronouncing the curses, mm-hmm. there's no area of our situation that was not damaged by sin. Mm-hmm. Death and, and disease is the result, but we can look to the future yeah. and say someday we'll, we'll be free from all that. Thank you very much. Very well good. I put very, very good wrap up too. We're all out of time. Thank you for being with us. And I hope that these answers have really ministered to people that are watching today. It's all time we have today. We'll be back again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful life. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly life life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.